You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is Hello again, everybody, all you yahoos out there. Welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with Stories. Hey, good to be back, yahoos! That's uh, Mark Norman. I'm Joe List. I was trying to do Bob Euchre's speech in uh, Major League. Oh, right. We, we talked about this a lot. Underrated comedy. Love that movie. Yeah, classic. It's like my top top ten comedies. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this. What the hell's on the table over there? Uh, Actually, it's funny you ask. That is a, uh, a Sirius XM... No, not oh, that. Oh, that's a uh, a doily from Sherry's Berries. Aha! Yeah, I opened up a box and saw the beautiful giant strawberries, and uh, yeah, that was in there. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Sherry's Berries. Well, we don't have our copy. We should be reading the copy right we now, I guess. We should be reading the copy. Where but the this is extra for them. Yes, this, this is, is bonus. bonus. We we actually uh, just opened. They they sent us some cherry cherries berries. Yes, and uh, pretty unbelievable. Huge, and they're succulent. I had one. I ate the two in the bathroom when no one was looking. They're unreal. It's dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. There's sprinkles. There's chocolate chips. Great for Mother's Day. Yeah, we should wait until we have the actual thing here. I know we're gonna ruin it, but whatever. But we'll get to that more later. Yes, more later. Sure. That sounded dumb. Anyways, I love Major League, and I love you. Speaking of Major League, tonight is the night. I mean, this is coming out next week. Tonight's the night the Baltimore Orioles are playing a game for zero audience. No crowd. Hey, I've done those shows. Hey. Yeah. First time in the uh, history. I didn't mean to do. That was probably inappropriate. Oh, uh, right, right. Well, everything's everything's on edge right now. You can't say anything or do anything or breathe right. Right, right. Breathe right. No strips. Our new sponsor, Breathe Right No Strips. Uh-huh. I used to do a joke. Boy, if you put one of those on your asshole when you're constipated, does that help? Ah, that's something. Not bad. Not bad. I don't think it works, though. No, no, because it would cover the hole. Isn't it weird? We've talked about this before. I, there's not been one moment in my comedy career where I thought I wasn't good at comedy, but then you look back and you're like, that was real awful. Oh, I thought I was terrible in the beginning. Oh, really? Oh, I had some bad jokes. Yeah. Uh, Boy, I'm pretty bad in bed. Uh, I'm not, I don't know how to get into it. One time a girl ripped my shirt off. I started collecting the buttons. Buttons, yeah. But then you thought that was good though, because you were saying it on stage. I, I was just throwing it, anything against the wall. Uh huh. It was one of those things. I had a whole. I had ten minutes on uh on the door stoppers. Mm hmm. Yeah. And remember that thing, those balls where you pull one and you let it go and it hits the the yeah. ball. I had like two per- minutes on that. Perpetual motion or something. Yes. Like that. Yes. Something like that. Those things are weird. Those were big for like a decade, I a think. A hot minute. Yeah, Ma- Magic 8-Ball was big, too. Remember that? I was going to mention the Magic Eye. Remember those Magic things? Magic Eye was huge. That was huge. The 8-Ball and then the, the dinging. All those, like, and then the water, the duck with the water and it dipped down yes, or whatever. What the hell was yes, that bullshit? Yes, yes. What was that for? I've never had any crap. Oh, how about this? This is the all-time most useless object. The Zen Garden. The mini Zen Garden. Uh-huh. With the little rake. Yeah. What was that? I don't know. I don't know if I had that one. Get a life. There was no Zen in my fam. No, no Zen. No. But all that, I feel good that I've never collected Hummels or Trolls or a dog. Oh, Beanie Babies. Yeah. All that shit. What a waste. Comic books even. Baseball card. I didn't have any of that shit. I had a baseball, I was a baseball card guy for sure. But, uh, mm. but that was a, you know, I'm talking childhood. Sure. Well, I, my, like my grandmother, she just collects shit. Just uh, absolutely, complete shit. <laughs> Knickknacks. Boxes and boxes of shit. Yes. It's uh, my grandmother has a, a giant armoire full of miniature shoes, mm. and it's just she goes to a you know she goes to Thailand. She's like, gotta get a shoe, gotta yes. find me a shoe, and that's her whole life. It gives her meaning. My mother's friend, who's dying of cancer, Lord be with you, or whatever you're supposed to say. Peace be thy name. Yeah, that too. She collects spoons, those little spoons. Like oh, cocaine right. crack yes. spoons. A Coke? That's so funny you say that. I threw a rager in high school. I threw the biggest house party of the year. And my mom didn't like salt and pepper shakers. I hope she never hears didn't this. Didn't like them? She didn't. She, went, she was like, ah, everybody's got those. I got to be outside the box. I got to be kooky. So well, she had a little bowl of salt and that, like an antique spoon like that. Uh-huh. Somebody stole the spoon. <laughs> that was all the only thing missing from the party. And my mom was like, where's the spoon? Was it for Coke? 
Of course. Oh, wow. Oh, I was around a lot of deviants back then. I never hear Coke and Deviant together. I guess you do. I'm thinking of Diva. Diva. Well, they do Coke, too. Really? Well, yeah, you got your uh, you know high-maintenance entertainer. They love the cocaine. I don't think uh, Aretha Franklin is doing Coke, but she's certainly a Diva. Maybe yeah, she does Coke. She's very right. heavy. Yeah, she probably didn't do Coke. No. She's she... probably doing milkshakes or something. I've seen her live a couple of times. Terrific. Get out of here. Yeah, I love Aretha. What are you doing seeing Aretha? I enjoy her. You go out and buy a ticket for Aretha? Twice. Get out of town! Yeah. I like that. Mostly to see the tits. Those are gigantors. Oh, you ever see those on. things? Yeah, but they're a weird old lady tit. I'm not into them. I just want to see it. It's like a side show. It's a front show. My dad's a big fan of uh, Tina Turner. Oh, really? Great yeah. stems. Great stems. And he would go see her when, when I was a kid, and I thought that was hip. What? Love got to do, got to do with it. Yeah. One of my earliest jokes was, uh, this is, I was like six, and that song was big, and it was, uh, who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? But anyways, I had a joke, I was like six, and I was like, what is, what is that? Everything can be broken. Who needs a leg when a leg can be broken? Mm. You can break a leg, you can break an arm. And right. everyone was like, shut up, Joe, you're a fucking nerd, and we hate you. Uh-huh. Everyone really poo-pooed me when I was a kid. I had a lot of poo-pooing as well. It really hurt my feelings. My mother's the only person in my life that was never not really mean to me at She's some point. Very supportive. Yeah. I noticed. I had a, a song joke too when I was a kid. I had a, you're so fat. You probably thought this cheeseburger was for you. That oh, like, that's fun. Eh, you know. Yeah. It's a song. But the fat jokes are a little insensitive, Mark. Yeah, but Come it, was, on. it was the 80s. Yeah, that's true. It's a different time. You know I'm fat! I'm fat! Exactly. You could call everyone fat back then. Right. Well, fat was it was shameful. You shouldn't be fat. Get, yeah. Get your life together. And now it's like, uh, big is beautiful. Uh. I had a horrible embarrassing. I just, this reminded me of a thought I had. Uh, we used to have yard sales at like my grandmother's house. Oh, I love a yard sale. Day. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I got, it reminds me of a couple stories, but one was uh, my mother sold all of my Star Wars figurines to Shirley too. Cooper. Oh, my God. In a trash bag. She was our black friend. And, uh-huh. uh, Sure, she, she, she actually she passed away, so rest her tits as well. Hallowed be thy name. But uh, <laughs> she, uh, my mother just sold the Millennium Falcon, all these things. Oh, that's big In a stuff. trash bag for like ten bucks, and it turns out they're worth like twenty grand. Oh, yeah, I still have mine. Thousands and thousands of dollars, and Shirley got them, and she was like, "Thanks, y'all." And and I was like, "Damn it, I just lost all my uh, Star Trek, in Star a Wars trash guys. bag, dude. How so disrespectful?" She just pumped them all in there, and I was like, "Okay," but at the time. You don't know about business and investments. Sure. They gave me ten bucks, and I went, I jerked off on it, and fucking rolled it up, and went and bought candy and a soda. What you were older? What was this? Twenty one, twenty two? Yeah, I was probably no, I was probably I wasn't that old. Come on, I was like seventeen. Oh, okay. I'm kidding again. I was like I don't know, thirteen, fourteen, maybe right, it's just, maybe fourteen. It's tough watching your your toys go away. Yes, it was very tough. But anyways, uh, we had this yard sale, and it was you know my aunts and uncles and my my cousins and my sister would, would all go and. And we were the kids, you know, we were all like 10 and 12 and 14 or whatever. They're four years older than me. And uh, we were upstairs. My parents had us really working. We were setting up the tables and, and, and setting up the figurines and coming up with the prices. And yes. Get... At the time, it felt like work because we were 10. Like, like, go get the scotch tape and make some tags with these monies and put them all in the thing. That felt like really work. Sure. So we were upstairs and everyone was venting. My sister, my cousin, my Uncle Dale. And uh, we were all like, yeah, what the fuck? They're, they're making us do all this work. And fuck them. It's our stuff they're selling. And... Hey, fuck them. And I was like nine. I was real shy. And I was like, yeah, I guess so. Fuck them. So then I went on a car ride with my mother and aunt to go to pick up sandwiches. And Uh-oh. I was in the back seat. And I took all my cousins and sisters' thoughts and I threw it at them. I was like, hey, you guys should be, we're busting our asses. This is our stuff you're wow. selling. You guys should be doing this work. Yeah. And my mother like pulled over. They both pulled over like, you know, the, the double turn yes. in the back seat and the yes. front and passenger both turn. They're like, you fuck, what are you, crazy? We bought you all this stuff. These are all Christmas gifts. Wow. We paid for everything. We're the ones working. What are you, what are you, insane? And Interesting. It, I was like, it wasn't me. It was Dale and Jamie. I don't know. Uh-huh. I, I feel great. I'm grateful. I love you. I hate those guys. You were influenced. I was influenced, and I thought I'd be like the ballsy guy. I was like, this is my way to get in, because they thought, uh-huh. I was like, just the nerd, fuck this guy. Right. Interesting. I was like, I'll tell them what's what, and I'll report back and go, hey. Yeah. We're, we got, we're taking the rest of the day off. They warped your young mind. Yeah, but as soon as I, I folded immediately, I was yeah. like, you're right. I started crying. I was like, they told me to do it. Oh, wow. And then they probably got beat, and I got to hang out. Right, right. 
Yeah, garage sales were fun. Uh, it's fun going to them. The only problem is when you go to a garage sale and then you realize you don't want anything and you got to just walk away. Right. That's a tough moment. Now, where do they call it a rummage sale? Did you call it a rummage sale? Garage all the way. We were, we were yard. You were oh, garage. Interesting. But somewhere it's a rubbish. A ru- heard, rummage. And there's also a state sale. That's the different, I think. Ah. That's the Louisiana Anna purchase you're thinking of. No, no. Estate. Oh, estate. Estate sale. Huh. I don't well. know if Louisiana was on sale. No, but it was for sale. But they purchased it something. Yeah, they did. I think it was, what, 20 bucks? We got a bunch of stuff out of it. Yeah. And I think we probably fucked up those Indians, I got to assume. We always do. The Native Americans. I'm your private dancer, dancing for money. Is that Tina? That's Tina, but All that's right. a terrible, terrible voice. Oh, jeez. I thought it was getting pretty... Pretty good. Normally it's decent, but oh, okay. that was particularly bad. I was trying to go extra Tina. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, How about yeah. this, Tina? I'm your private dancer, dancing for money. I think the rhythm's off. Huh. But the voice isn't bad. Rhythm and blues. Yes. Well, I want to get into a story here, buddy boy. Uh-huh. I, uh, well, I don't know if I told you this story yet. It was pretty, uh, I had a wild incident here. I stay at my uh, my girlfriend Sarah Talamash's house. Uh, sweet gal, check her out. Follow her on Twitter for God's sake. Funny at, tweets at Talamash. Decent Instagram coming along. Yeah, good. Inst- I, I tell her you got an Instagram. What are you doing out there? I love Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're really missing out. At Joe List Comedy. At Mark Nor. At Mark Normand. You got it. You got the full name over there on Instagram. Yeah, I nailed it. Yeah, and I just posted one of uh, Mark a few minutes ago. Killer pick. Probably blowing up. Anyways, so uh, I stay at Sarah Talamash's house most nights. When she's in town, we stay there. And uh, there's a bodega downstairs at her house. So you get people, you know, really ordering loud orders down there. And, uh, you can hear of, it? Oh, yeah. It's right downstairs. It, oh, it wow. comes right up the brick, I think. I yeah. think brick is good for sound or something. I, apparently. I guess. Maybe. But anyways, they let the trucks idle. And a lot of these people, it's, it's right across the street. And I don't want to get uh, racy here, but it's right across the street from the project. So you have a lot of... Uh, you know, urbanites sure. and uh, a lot of the loud music. And so these people will uh, pull up and uh, I shouldn't say these people, the people in this story. The Asians. You got to really tap dance these days. Yes, you do. Eggshells, baby. A lot of eggshells. And uh, so they pull up in the car and they'll let the car just idle while they go inside and buy, you know, Coca Puffs and cigarettes and Oreos, whatever you buy at a bodega. And the, they leave the car running, and the music is still playing. So you have that doom, 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 uh-huh. and the fucking whatever the music is. And some of these trucks, the they'll, they'll delivery trucks too. It's not all the uh, urban types. A lot of these delivery guys, they'll just leave the truck idling out there. Yeah, for like a half an hour. I hate the an city idle. trucks. And some of these guys, the city people, they'll get sandwiches. They'll leave the thing idling while the sandwich is, so the car stays warm or uh-huh. cool, depending uh-huh. on your season. Sure. Then they come out, and they just eat in the truck, with the truck fucking idling. Oh, come on. And so sometimes you'll get an idle and the music at the same time. Jeez, Billy Idol. It's really, really frustrating. I don't like it. And we, we've hated it for years. We can't stand it. And then uh, recently we moved rooms, so we're one room closer to the bodega. It really is a nightmare sometimes. Yeah. She's a sensitive sleeper. So anyways, this particular day, it's around noon... A nooner, and she's gone off to work, and I'm just wrapping up, masturbating, looking at her shoes, you know? Sure. I like to look at a high heel. Oh, I love a high heel. Maybe sniff a panty. Whatever I got to do. Hey, new guy. Uh, so I'm looking at a porn. Whatever I'm doing in there, I make it my own. It's uh-huh. nice to be in a girl's bedroom when she's not there. Oh, I go through everything. I'm sniffing. I'm yes. licking. I got every, I'm got. i trying clothes on. Yes. I got a pair of lipsticks on. You make your own little fashion show in front of the mirror. Of course. Yes. You really got to live it up in there. Oh, I, I yeah. just... It's... The ultimate masturbation kit. Yeah, you're in the masturbation dungeon. Sometimes I'll put out outfit. I'll put bra on the pillow and I'll put on another pair of panties. Ooh, you know what I mean? You gotta yeah. really do it up. I like and, to do uh, a puppet show with the panties. Yeah, a couple wigs, whatever yes. it is. You know. So, anyways, this day I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap up. I go to pick up my la- our laundry. I pick up Sarah's laundry as well. Oh, nice BF. Yeah, I come upstairs. I, I drop off her laundry. I drop off my laundry, and this car pulls up. It's like a Toyota Celica. This is a, a Latina fella, Latino. Latino is he's a masculine, man. Yes. yes. So uh, he, he pulls up, and the music is so fucking loud. Yeah. I don't even know how to describe it without... I know you got sensitive ears with the tubes when yes. you were a kid. Yes, tubes as a kid. Tell him about the tubes. Had the tubes in the ears as a kid. That's right. Swimmer's ear, we called it. Ooh. I never swam. Interesting. Yeah. I had uh, javelin ears. Aha. Uh-huh. Anyways, you so... Get a guy together, we do a triathlon. Indeed. <clears throat> so anyways, <laughs> swimming with a javelin, that can't be easy. 
No, you got to keep that thing above water. Yeah, it'd be tough. It gets rusty and uh, right, whatever. So, anyways, this guy's music is so fucking loud, Mark. I mean, and it's it's a hip hop song, and th- th- it's it's a lot of the n word, a lot of n word, a lot the, of bass, n word this and n word that. And it's noon. We're in a neighborhood, and this n word is a pretty serious word. Sure, that's what and I heard. You got it just blasting, and there's children everywhere, and, uh. and, and and there's people walking around, and people are going to work, and there's old people. Yeah, and I mean, it's so loud, and New York City is so compact. That this is affecting like 800 people's lives, your music. Right. Everyone can hear it. And it's so loud. Like the, win- I'm talking window shut in the kitchen, like on the other side of the house. I can hear this music clear as day. I hate to sound like grandpa here, but who enjoys the, I wouldn't, how can you enjoy the music if it's that loud? I don't think they are. I think they're just letting you know, hey, ah, I'm here. Ah, okay. I'm here, everybody. I got it. And so this guy, uh, he, he pulls, he gets out, he opens the door so it gets like that much louder. Sure. He goes inside and then he shuts the door. He just leaves the car running with the music on while he's inside. And he's ordering a sandwich because he's in there for like 10 minutes with this music on. And I'm so fucking angry. And I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it. I've always wanted to do it. Yes. I'm doing it. I'm getting an egg, and I'm going to fucking egg this guy's car. Whoa! I, get, I got all. I got a hair across my ass. Is I that like the it. You get the, a, you get the breathe right open. A fire in the ass, and I go in there. I go, I go to her kitchen. I oh, get an oh, egg. Oh, yeah. A wild hair up your ass. Yes. Yes. A, a pubic hair. Yeah. I got tons of them up there, as a matter of fact. They're gray. Yeah, but I come back out. I'm stressed. So I come back out, and I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm, and I'm freaking out. You know me. I'm, I'm really losing my shit. My, my oh, heart's yeah. pumping. I'm, I'm shaking like Jay Fox and... So I open the window and the screen. I'm like, I, I got it. Here you go. I'm about to d- just do it, you fucking pussy. Yeah. This guy's a fucking piece of shit. Bagark, bagark. So I get, to, I go to throw it, and he comes out. Ah. Oh. And I go, oh, my God. Thank God I didn't throw it. He would have seen me. I would have been killed. What yeah. am I going to say? What am I, and I, you know when you come to your senses, you're like, what yes. am I? I'm an adult. It's daytime. I'm 33 years old, for God's sakes. Put the egg away, you nut. That was stupid. I was even going to think about doing that. I hate this guy. Uh huh. So then he gets in his car, and I, I put the egg back, and I come down, and I get my uh, my laundry. I'm going to take that to my house. And I got the, the hooks on the hanger, whatever you call it, and the thing. And so I'm walking downstairs, and I'm like, whew, thank God I didn't do that. What the hell was I thinking? I'm an idiot. i got to come to my senses with this stuff. Yeah. And as I'm walking out, he goes back in. He's, uh. He walks back in for another round, and immediately I go, I'm doing it! Yeah! I'm gonna get him! And so I throw my laundry down, and he sees me walking out, so he knows I'm leaving the apartment. Uh huh. Once he goes in the bodega, I turn around, and I come right back in the house. I drop my laundry at the bottom of the stairs, I run up, and I'm like, I'm not thinking about it. It's like a band-aid. You're just gonna yes, rip it off, you know? Yes. So I go up there, I grab the egg, it was the last egg in the carton, throw the carton in the recycle barrel. I'm a good person. Good for you. I run out, rip open the window, rip open the screen, without thinking, I just throw it right in the back of the windshield. Oh my god! Dead center goes, Poosh! Wow! And it goes everywhere. It was like a movie. Oh my I lord! I slammed the screen shut. I slammed the window shut. And I just jumped in the ground. And immediately, it was like, I regret it. I regret it. I regret it. I regret it. What am I doing? I'm crazy. Wow! I was like, this is horrible. This is the worst thing I've ever done. He could kill me. What am I doing? I'm, I can't believe you did it. I was like, I'm gonna be up here forever. I'm gonna be up here for years. The beard, growing a beard. Yes. I gotta tell Sarah to move. We got to break up. You gotta cancel shows. It's horrible. Oh, I forgot to mention my favorite part of the whole thing. Damn it. When he came out the first time, he was in the car with the door open, like eating a sandwich. And I was like, I could get it right in the car. Oh, wow. I could throw it in there and just hit him. But I was like, that's insane. He would see it, yeah. But then the N-word song ended, and I hear, Dude looks like a lady. The oh, Aerosmith song, Dude looks like a lady, came on for a moment and immediately changed it. Aha! Uh-huh. To another, like, you know, some sort of hip hop or dance song or something. Oh, I, I, I guess like, he's, he's got it on shuffle. I bet he's got a mixed disc on yes. there, and he has, dude looks like a lady in there. Yeah, and he didn't want anyone to know. He was probably a Mrs. Doubtfire fan. But he was a kid. Who isn't? I I am. I know that. I'm a big fan of it. It's a drive-by fruiting. A run-by fruiting. Sorry, run-by. I was going to use the same line. Damn it. Synergy. Ah. So anyway, so I, I fucking drop my laundry, I throw the egg, I shut the window, and I'm just laying on the floor, I'm like... What am I doing? I'm insane. Yeah. I was like, I'm insane. This is so stupid. What right. an ignorant thing to do. This guy could kill me. I'm, I'm going to be stuck here all day. So immediately, right after I freak out, I hear the, the music gets louder, which means the car door opened again. Uh-huh. I hear it shut, and I hear the music slowly disappear. So he left immediately. Interesting. Didn't notice the egg. Come on. Well, because it's on the back windshield, and he's uh-huh. got the door lined up with the bodega, so he walks straight out. Uh-huh. So he's not going to notice it for a while, and he's a fucking asshole, so he doesn't check behind him before he pulls out. He wow. just pulls out because he's a piece of shit. Perfect scenario. Yeah, well, hopefully. Yeah, I, I, my mind, I'm like, I think I'm good, but what if he notices it like 100 yards down the street, like the Mighty Ducks, with think, that purse with the dog shit? Oh, right. I think you're it. fine. I think I'm good because, first of all, he's probably driving around all day, and he probably assumes... 
you know, some kid threw it or someone in the sure. car threw it. Yes. And uh, there's so many windows up there. He would have to see it coming out. But if he had come out one second earlier and saw it, we'd have to move. Oh, yeah, that's huge. It's a dumb thing to do. Yeah, but I'm proud of you. I felt good. It fe- once he drove away, I felt pretty good about it. Then I started to re-freak out. But it was a real emotional roller coaster. couple things, if I may. Please. Okay. That's why you're here. Uh, one, what bugs me about this is... You did the right thing, but it's somehow it seems like uh, when you yell at somebody about loud music, you get in trouble. Don't you feel like that? Yeah. Like if you go, hey, buddy, turn that down. They go, hey, fuck you. It's like, well, wait, you're in a neighborhood. You're inconsiderate. You're pissing everyone off. Why am I? You know, I'm just trying to keep it straight. Well, that's the thing because you're dealing with someone who's inconsiderate. That's what it is. So they're not going to care about you. Right. And I have to say this. I left this note out as well. I did attempt to tell him, but he couldn't even hear me. I was like, sir. Sir! And it was so loud, he didn't even flinch. He has no idea. Really? But these people, they should be stopped. You should be ticketed. Of course. I mean, you should get arrested. That's crazy. It's a, it's a sound ordinance, whatever. I'm like, you're such an inconsiderate human being. It's so rude. And the problem with the egg is, though, it was it excited and felt good, but he's not going to know that's why. He's not going to go, oh, there's an egg here. I was, was going to say Let that. me turn my music down from right. now on. That's right. the problem. But it, it felt good, but... Uh, Definitely uh, dangerous because if he sees it, he knows whether we, we could be targeted. We could be just right and well, terrified. Here's the other thing: he could also. This is the problem with this kind of shit: is like he could say that was a hate crime. Oh, he hates me because I'm a Latino or whatever the fuck. That's totally that that flies now. Maybe I don't know. Oh, what are you kidding? That's a huge. They, they're pulling the race card. I think if we beat him up or something, I think if I did, I think I would have the ah. advantage in that situation. They'd go, well, the white guy, they'd take the white guy's word of the I'm Latino. I'm sure they would take whitey, but I'm just saying it's possible. Like, yeah, this guy threw an egg at my car because he doesn't like Spanish people or whatever. Yeah, I guess. But I, I think I think if I fucking went down there and beat him with a iron, they might be able to play that angle. Wow, yeah. But uh, that's not gonna happen. No, I'm not gonna beat anyone. I'm scared to death, but. Also, I, Sarah and I both left for different countries the next day. I went to Canada. She went to the Cayman Islands. So it was oh, good. I was like, let's we'll clear out of here. Let this thing settle over. But I'm sure he was pissed, and I, I feel like he deserves it. He has to go get his car washed. Fuck that guy. Totally. Yeah, the egg uh, kills the paint. These people well, it just landed a windshield, basically. But these people with the, the music cranking, it's... I don't want to sound like old man Witherspoon here, but uh, it's insane. You're just an inconsiderate person. It's the same with the guy on the motorcycle. He rips the muffler off or whatever the fuck they do. Oh, and I he hate it, those. Drives to the suburbs. Bah! What the fuck is wrong with you? I, I it's 10 hate in the morning, it. you lunatic. Get out of here. I hate that shit. It, it makes me fucking sick. Yeah. If I saw that guy fall off the bike, I'd be like, good. Turn I, that bike off. I feel that way a lot of times with people weaving in and out on the motorcycles, just doing 80. And then you see these bumpers. These people have the gall to have bumper stickers that say, motorcycles everywhere, check twice, check twice and save a life. Mm. I'm like, all right, I'll check twice, but stop weaving in and out of fucking lanes also. Right, you right. drive properly. Right, yeah. I, it makes me nuts. What am I, Santa Claus checking it twice? Get your, get in the lane. And I'm not one of these, I hate everyone on a motorcycle guy, but the ones that are purposefully loud and they're oh, weaving yeah. in and out of lanes, it, it makes me... It makes me crazy. That's insane. Well, but, I don't get it. You, you, I mean, I hate to be that cliche, but like the dick small thing. Like, how much attention do you need? And then, sure, I get it. I want attention too. I'm a comedian, but you want attention the right ways. Why do you just want to piss everybody off in a, in a town? Right. Have a podcast. Yeah. Put a muffler on your bike and start a podcast. God damn it! There Call it the mufflers. Go. The muff podcast. Yeah, muff diving. Yeah. There's no real muff diving because people shave their vaginas. Yeah, I you guess. don't hear about that. I guess it's just diving now. Yeah, now it's just, now it's just a dive. It's just diving. It's yeah. a stubble dive. Yeah, it's a skin dive. Ooh, that sounds like a problem. Skin dive. You ever throw an egg at somebody? When's the last time you threw an egg at somebody? Oh, it's been years. Oh, how about this? Uh, Halloween. You know, you start turning into a teenager. You get a little mischievous. Yeah, Mischie- mischievous. Mischievous? Mischievous. Mischievous. Yeah. I think there's an I in there, too. Mischievous? I can't say... Uh, there's quite a few words I can't say. Mischievous. Got it. A lot of words I do say. I don't know what they mean. I got a few of those as well. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we teamed up I said candor well. the other day. I have no idea what that means. Jason Candor. Yeah. <laughs> I know what that means. So... Uh, <laughs> it means trouble. So I, I was Halloween, and uh, me and my friend... Halloween? Like, Halloween. 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 It's H-A. Wow. Ha. You can't go by the letters these days. <laughs> There's a lot of things with the wacky letters. Halloween? Halloween! You're saying H-O-L-L-O-W-E-E-N. I think it, I think it flies. How, what right. do you say there? What? Halloween. Halloween. It's Halloween. You, you can't got, go by the letters. That's topsy-turvy. If you went by letters, it'd be Joe Matchy. It'd be Joe Matchy. No, but C-H could make a cuh. 
A can't make a ha. A can make a ha. Huh? Oh yeah, like ha ha. Ha ha. Alright. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Okay. Uh-huh. Alright, so Halloween, I guess. You go by the letters. That's like everyone with the aunt. My aunt Betty. My That's aunt. your aunt, you fucking psychopath. I say aunt as well. How about the people say auntie? My auntie. Why'd you add an E? You weirdo. Uh, that's just a nickname, though. I don't like it. But no one says Uncle E. Exactly. My Uncle E. Uh huh. They say Uncle Ish. Yeah. Like if you finger a girl at a barbecue, it's Uncle Ish. Is that right? <laughs> well, I got a weird uncle. <laughs> then I'm Uncle Ish. <laughs> um, Woo! Love a good barbecue fingering. So you're eggering. You're egging. You're eggering. I'm eggering. It's Halloween. It's Halloween. It's and a I'm, very Halloween. And I'm eggering. I'm egging. I'm egging it on. Well, so, you look sleepy. Oh, I'm sleepy, baby. Uh, so sleepy, <laughs> sleepy hollow, sleepy hollow, ween. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I just spit up tea just to say that dumb line. Private dancer. <clears throat> so uh, me and my friend grab a couple eggs, and there's a new house being built on the block. And for some reason, we were like, "Fuck this house being built!" So we just went and egged the shit out of it. And uh, my friend was uh, he, he had a wild hair possessed too, because he was like the good friend. He was very uh, behaved, but he was like, "Let's egg it, fuck it." Ah. So we go egg the house, and then uh, as we're egging it, this guy yells out from another house. He goes, hey, you kids! And he's like angry, red, purple face, like, ah! So we run, and we run, and my friend uh, opens his front door, runs in. I'm running in, and he's so scared to get caught that he slams the door on me. Oh. And it killed and the fucking door went right in my side, and, like hit a rib and everything, and I was like... <laughs> You know, I did that whole thing, and uh, but you know, you're so keyed up, there's so much energy and uh, adrenaline that you, I, we just went in. and It was never discussed again. Oh wow! And we just hid under the covers for like two days. What is, what is it about a new house in the neighborhood that everyone hates? People are like, "Fuck that! We're gonna camp in it. We're gonna shit in it. We're gonna yeah. break the windows. We're Graffiti. gonna feedy." Yes, it's the new kid in town, baby. There's something about a new house that everyone's like, "Let's come on it. Let's fucking cut yeah. our wrists and bleed on it." Right? We egg that thing. And there's something about it. I think I know what it is because eventually there's a family in there, and uh-huh. you can just every time you drive by, they have the potted flowers, and there's a kid, and they're bathing outside, and you go, "You know, I've come in your bedroom." Right? Is that it? I think so. I've taken a shit in there. I've stood in there. You've been in that person's house. Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of like, you know, conquering a woman. You're like, when someone gets married, but you're like, I, I fucked your wife. Ah, wow. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. You know what else is interesting? Uh, I was a kid once, and this woman rang, Me too. My, my, rang my doorbell and said, uh, hey, I used to live here. Can I, can I come in? Oh, it's you a ever, Springsteen song. You ever hear of this? I've heard it just through Springsteen. He does that in some songs. Very odd move. Very strange. Because I'm just walking around probably like eight. I'm walking around with this woman, and she's just looking up at everything like, oh, wow, this changed. That wasn't there. I'm like, are you about done? I got a TV dinner in the microwave. They don't do it as much, but it seems like it's a lot easier for women to to be predators, to to rape and murder. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Because people trust a woman. They go, yeah, "Yeah, come on in. I'll show you around. She could take off her high heel and hit you in the temple with it. I was kind of hoping she would. Yeah, I'd be into that. They're very non-threatening, the ladies. Yes, until they're threatening. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. Women Who Kill is a TV show on one of those channels. Ooh. Yeah. It's about Sarah Talamash. Oh. Check her out, everybody. She's a stand-up comic. Hey. All right. Uh, oh, I had another egg thing I thought of while you were telling your egg thing. Egg it up. This is an egg episode. Excellent. I was about to say that. Wow. We yeah. are sinner. Sinner G. Sinner egg. Uh, one time, my friend Jeff Andrews and I, we, he was my kind of partner in crime in high school. We had a lot of fun. It's so fun when you, you realize, I think we've talked about this before, where you realize that it's, it's all real silly. Oh, yeah. High school. Love it. Life. When you get that under your belt that this is all just pretty much nonsense we're all going away folks yeah you get a real uh it's you get a leg up when you're like this is all pretty silly this whole thing yeah it's a nice it's a load off what you that? realize that your big load off that's like uh what's that kurt vonnegut quote he said uh make no mistake we're on earth to fart around Ooh, i like that something like that he's I'm good probably misquoting terrific big fan anyway so one time jeff andrews and i we had a big courtyard in our high school and we went into home ec class, and we asked. We said we needed eggs for a science project. And uh, whatever the teacher was, she was like, oh, okay, because we were sweet boys, you know. You can get away with a lot when you're not a troublemaker. Sure. You know what I mean? Because we, uh, we were fun, sweet guys. Uh-huh. I was a bad student. He was a good student. Anyways, so we got a couple of eggs, and then we went to gym, the, the gymnasium. We stole three orange cones. Mm. So we had quite a little plan cooking. And so we went uh, into the courtyard... And I just smashed an egg, dropped an egg on the courtyard, like the cement. And then we took the three cones and we set up three cones around the egg. Uh huh. And then we watched. Nobody, t- everyone just walked around it all day. Nobody cleaned it up. Nobody asked any questions. Everybody just assumed that something was happening there. 
Wow. So we watched all these teachers just walk by and be like, oh, weird. Yeah. It's a weird thing. It's just a, a cracked egg with three cones on it, and for the whole school day, nobody cleaned it up. Nobody asked, what, was, what the hell is this for? Mm. Who did this? It's an odd prank. It's, it's odd, but it's fun. That's what's made so fun about yeah, it. Yeah, it's almost like a sociological experiment. It was a sociological experiment. Experiment. Yes. Uh-huh. Interesting. Not much of a punchline, I guess. Jeez, well, but... Uh, those pranks were... A bad prank is uh, not... One kid uh, brought a turtle to school, mm-hmm. and he was like... He, I don't know. He stole a turtle from the zoo. I don't know where he got it. It was a big ass turtle. It was like the size of a manhole. Right. And he just let it loose in the hallway, and he thought everybody would be like, ah! but it just, everyone just stopped and watched it walk at five miles an hour. Oh, or whatever weird. the hell. And it was it, nothing happened. See, that's was, what I, I felt good about because a turtle could bite someone and give it rabies or AIDS or something. But yeah, I don't we, know about we that. felt <laughs> we felt good. We'll have to Google it. Yeah. But we felt good. We never did anything that really disrupted anything. Uh huh. We had silly fun thing. I like a silly fun. I like a silly fun too. But I also love a a, a crazy, uh, well thought out prank. I told you about the uh, the time the seniors at Ben Franklin High School got a bunch of manure and they went to the field overnight to the other school. And they wrote, uh, seniors are the shit. Oh. And, you know, it was a huge, you had to get up on the top floor to see it, but it was like beautifully done. I mean, that is a lot of manure. A seniors lot of manure. Are the sh- that's a lot of character. You can't even tweet that. Senior, you tweet that. You can tweet it, but I was trying to be, uh, exaggerate. Aha. Uh-huh. Egg. Egg. Exaggerate. Aha. Uh-huh. Boy, that's a lot of manure. A lot of shit. Must have had to eat a lot of beans, folks. Sherry's Beans, this episode. Hey, we don't have to do the copy, Andrew, by the way. Our producer just got here. He's seven weeks late, you and uh, he's pregnant. You look showered. I did shower. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, I didn't shower. Did you shower? I did. Uh, I didn't shower. I showered at 6 a.m., 6.30 in the morning. I will go get you the copy. It's Sherry's Berries. Now. Yeah. Sherry's Berries, Sherry's Berries, whatever the fuck it is. Sherry. Sherry! Wow. That's that synergy. We, uh, Sy- synergy Daniels. How about, the, how about when you, you and your friends, when you were a kid, or even now, you say something at the same time, and then someone always has to go, you guys are hanging out too much. And I'm like, well, maybe we're hanging out just the right amount. I like that. It, it makes me, and it was always negative. Yeah. Well, how about this? I used to always get this from my family, too. They really picked on me, these, these douches. They'd go, oh, boy, I know a commercial by heart. And they go, you watch too much TV. And I'm like, well, maybe I just have an amazing memory. How about that? I just I saw this commercial twice, and I memorized it. Uh-huh. How about that? Fuck you. Ah, uh-huh, I'm with you. How about, I hate this one, and no one ever knows what I'm talking about. But when you go, uh, they go, so how long have you been doing comedy? And you go, well, I've been doing it this long. And they go, that's pretty good, or whatever. And you go, yeah, Richard Pryor did. And they go, oh, you're comparing yourself to Richard Pryor? Yes, he's a comedian. Right. I'm not saying I'm as good as him. He's another he does the same job as me. Yeah, that's always weird. And you have to do that sometimes. You go, I'm not comparing myself to Louie, but right. say, yeah, what the hell? We're doing comedy. Yeah, we're on the same show. We have the same profession. We're at the same venue. Yeah. He's better. He's more successful. And the whole th- the whole reason it pisses me off is I'm like, you're not listening to me at all. You just wanted to find a way. Oh, oh you're like, oh, I can cut him down on this one. People love to nitpick. They love a cut. Yes. Cut you down. I like to cut. I like when the producer's gone. It feels like we just own the place. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I could take a shit right here. Please. I don't have to shit, though. I get, uh, ah. But I had that oatmeal, so it could be kicking in any moment. Oh, we got that Chipotle gift card. Oh, a couple of gift cards last night. We did a live one out at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick. Thank you for everyone that came out. A whole bunch of people came out. Yeah, it was a good show. We, we're, we're building something here, buddy. Yeah, we were really building. We had about 3,000 people there. Yeah, that show, <laughs> well, minus that by about 20. It was That was the real number. Yeah, about 2,800 people. Yeah, it was a real lunch show. We had uh, we had some fans come out. We took some photos. And John they, Asher came by and took some photos. Yes, yes. How about that JJ? Give oh, him a boy. shout out. He drove six hours to come see us. That JJ seems like a real kook. I liked his style. Yeah, yeah. I got an odd vibe from him, but uh, he's moving in with me soon. <laughs> he came down. JJ from uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts, neighboring town of mine. Ah. My hometown, and uh, not technically a neighbor. There's one town in between us, but whatever. It's where the uh, Plymouth Rock. You know about Plymouth Rock? Columbus? No, the Pilgrims. Ah. Yeah, I'm thinking of the Nina. El Nina and Santa Marie and, and the Pinta. Uh, and Pinta. Yes. Yes. Pinta. I used to drive a Pinto. I like a Pinto bean. Really? I've never heard of it. They got that at Chipotle. No it's kidding. Black and Pinto. I skipped the beans. Oh, uh, give me a bean. You love a bean. Good protein. I'm from Bean Town. You got that right. All right. You're from the Windy City, is it? Big Easy. Ah, the Big Easy. That's what I used to call my sister in grade school. Hello, folks. Yes, she's a fat whore. Yeah, uh, she's not. Uh, she's not big or easy. You're so all right. She's thin and difficult. No, yeah. kidding. <laughs> 
Ah. Uh, thin and very sweet and supportive is what she is. Where the hell have you been lately? What are you talking about? You've been on the road. I've been right here, buddy. Oh, I was in Montreal. I went right Ooh. up to the egg throwing. I went up to Montreal. Best city in America, if you ask me. Hell of a town. USA. Great, great city. Up in uh, Manitoba. Boy, what a hell of a place. Uh-huh. So I uh, went up there, flew up there. What a great gig. It's an hour and a half flight to I Montreal. Love I love it. Beautiful. And what a city. Tremendous city. If you haven't been, go up, especially if you're in the Northeast or New England, I'm sure you've been. But uh, we used to go up there from the age of 18 to 21. We'd go up there all the time because mm-hmm. you can drink in the strip clubs, and the women are just stunning up there. Stunning. It's not even a myth. It's a real thing. Yes. But I uh, went up there, and uh, just a great weekend up at the Comedy Works, and uh, Corey Griffin came out, Hey, of course, and uh, boy, he's a sweet guy. Had a couple fans come out. Their shows, like you said, they're a little tough. Then that's not a great crowd over there. Thursday and Friday are tough, and then Friday was game two of the Montreal Canadiens series with the Ottawa Senators. So there was a, a very light, but Saturday night, boy... Back in action. Packed. Good. Packed, and it was amazing. And Friday day in Montreal, it was like 70 degrees and sunny. So I strolled on down to old Montreal. Yeah, you got to do it. It is spectacular down there. Picturesque. It's picturesque. I, I, I Instagram some pictures. Beautiful old brick buildings and like the... The Parliament Building, whatever the hell it's called, the governor, who gives a shit? Yeah. It's spectacular, and uh, I went to some real pretentious French coffee shops. Ooh, good. And uh, they're all you know, French, and there's the the croissants and uh, the tea. And the French, they get a bad rap. I think it's kind of fun over there. Yeah, they're all right. They're, there's a, a couple weird things with the, the hairy pits. And the, uh, the, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. And the baguettes and the fucking berets. I don't think you can say baguette anymore. Oh, right, right. Uh, uh. Bagasexual. Thank you. Thank you. So, anyways, uh, I don't know. I, I liked it over there. It was really fun and uh, just a beautiful, I, one of those days where you're by yourself and you're fine with, you don't want any company. It's just 70 and I'm just strolling around. I went down to the water and I hit this, uh, art museum or art, uh, what do you, expose? What do they call it? Expo. Uh, exhibit. Exhibit. Not an exhibit. Good rapper. Not an exhibit. That's in a museum. What's oh. the one that's... It's a gallery. A gallery. I went to this gallery, and there's a Montreal painter. He's in his 70s now called John Hart. H-A-R-T. You got to check. What's so funny? I just like the delivery was funny. John Hart and uh, H-A-R-T. You got to check this fella out. He is amazing. And I walked in. I love an art gallery. And oh, Montreal's got a ton of them. Love a gal. I'm a real art guy. And so I like to look at the paintings and all the stuff, and uh, I go in there, and this kooky French woman, I love a kook. Yeah, kooks are all right. Like a passionate kook, you know? Yes. She comes in, she's like, hello, miss, monsieur, what the, can I tell you the thing? And she's like, hat talks like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And she's like, can I tell you about the paintings? And I was like, please, I'd love to hear about the paintings. And she was so passionate. I think she must have had a roll in the hay with this John Hart fella. Aha. Uh-huh. But he's a fascinating painter. He paints with spaghetti. Get out of here. He takes spaghetti and he puts a bunch of layers on it and he makes it look like wheat grass. Wow. So it's almost like a 3D, to, not 3D, maybe 2D. I don't know the Ds. I I'm think bad it's with three. the Ds. I think it's 3D. Maybe 3. There's no glasses, though. Ah, I like the glasses. I mean, I wear glasses just for corrective lenses. Yeah. But anyways, he wraps up the tortellini and he, he's pasted it right on there and he's the only one that does it. She was very adamant about that. He's the only one that paints like this. Mm-hmm. She was really yelling at me, but she was sexy. Yeah. She was older. She was probably like, sometimes I, I feel bad. I'm, I, I shouldn't admit it because it makes me sound like a weirdo, but a lot of times when you're talking to a woman, I know they don't want to hear this. I'm just picturing having sex oh, with her. Oh, jeez. Of course. It's all I do. I don't think it's reversed. I don't think they do that. And that, that, ah. that's why it's so tough for these women in these businesses. I know. I, I, we're not creeps. We're just wired wrong. I'm sorry. That's how I'm wired. How wired. I'm listening to her, and I love everything she's saying, and I'm getting the information. But while I'm doing that, the other half, I don't know if it's a left-right brain thing. Yeah. But my right brain is like, the, the, I'm, okay, so he paints with fruit, and he paints with the thing, and that's great. And my left brain is like, you could bend her over, you could have sex, yes. you could touch her butthole. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think about that all the time. But... I think I was talking to a girl the other day, and she was telling me how she got no male attention in college, and it killed her. So I think there is an inkling in the ladies. They're like, I, it's, it's an animal thing. It's a primal biological thing. Like, I do want to get railed of so course. I can have a kid. They want to be desired, yes, desired, but they also want to be respected and listened to. Can't we have both? 
They get both. All right. I but, respect you. But they work it. It's been a long, long time yeah, going. Long yeah, time yeah, uh, yeah. coming there. Right. I think they're getting there. Yeah. But there's still a lot of time. I think with comedians, I think a lot of times the woman comedian is on stage and a good portion of the audience is just going, I just want to fuck her. I wonder what she's like in bed. Right, right. And that's difficult. That's but tough. I don't know how to... Like you said, The Wire. But I, I was listening anyways. I, I appreciated her. And she was really fascinating. But she knew so much about each painting. And it was like a... I would have paid 50 bucks for this tour. She took me from painting to painting. It was wow. like, this is this. It represents this. And I got to tell you, buddy, I need someone to tell me what it's all representing. I like that, too. I don't know anything. Because I like having my own interpretation. But I want to hear the artist's yes, interpretation. Yes, yes. A lot of times people are like, Bob Dylan, I think he meant this. And I'm like, but I don't really care what you... Th I want to know what he did yes, think. What yes. is this painting or song actually about? Wow. And let me ask you this. Was there any point in the back of your noggin where you go... Shit, I gotta buy one of these fucking things. No, I can't afford it. But it, I think she's that that's the point of the tour, I think. Uh, she's hoping someone will buy, but I think she I really think she was just passionate about painting and art and the guy. Okay. But some of my you know what's crazy? I feel like I'm at a point now where I could afford it. Is that right? It's like a paint that's eight hundred bucks. I'm like, I I could I could buy uh, it with eight hundred bucks. That's a steal. A lot uh, of these are twenty grand or whatever. But I have another theory, and that's not my original theory, I don't think. But a lot of times you buy painting, you're doing a disservice. Because now it's out of the galleries, it's out of the museums, it's at my house. You have to come to my house to see this work of art. I know, but they make a living on that. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah. So I guess it's a service to them. So basically it's a tough gig. Don't be a painter. Tough tough gig indeed. Or I think make two copies. She said he's been painting for 25 years professionally for like 10 years. It was something crazy wow. like that. I was like, boy, that's a worse rate than comedy. Yeah, they struggle. Yeah, but uh, check him out. John Hart, H-A-R-T. He does amazing work. I Instagrammed one of them. Oh, wow. And uh, But uh, it was really great. But she was so kooky and fun and passionate. I, I really loved this woman. I wanted to just hang out with her more. Yeah, yeah. I had that with a, uh, I don't want to take you off top, but I had a, uh, a makeup woman recently do some shit on my face for a sh TV shoot, mm -hmm. and she was like a kooky, wacky, kind of nutty broad, and she's from Staten Island. She was a little older. And uh, I had this, this thing with her. I think I talked about this on the pod, did I? Uh, I yes, her. I think she, she said squirter. She's a oh, squirter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you I, talked I, about I that. I got her number. Wow. Yeah. Has she squirted on you? No, not yet. That would be cool if you painted like with that, with squirting. Ooh, like a Pollock. I am really obsessed with squirts. I love a squirt. I love the squirts. All right, let's get into We have to read this uh, Sherry's Berries. Yeah. So uh, let's let's read it. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. All right, we're about to do a uh, ad here, folks, and yes. uh, we we started it earlier. But we got we got here today, and they sent us a box of this uh, Sherry's berries. How yes. do you say it? Sherry's berries. It rhymes. Sherry, S H R I. Sherry's berries, and uh, man, these berries. There's no. I thought we were gonna get like a like a little plastic carton of blueberries. Oh no! This is a a box, like a beautiful box, like you'd buy a box of chocolates, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a great gift. Mother's Day coming up May 11th, May 10th. Yes. May this, 10th. This weekend. Next weekend. Next weekend. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. Yes. yes. May 10th. It'll be here. And uh, boy, it's Mother's Day is this weekend. It's officially last minute. So yes. if you don't have a gift for your mother, do that. You got to go for Shari's, Shari's <laughs> Berries. Shari's <laughs> Berries. Show her you love her with this big box of beautiful, giant, chocolate-covered strawberries. You, you can't even believe how big these fucking things are. Oh, got to watch the language. But uh, they are huge. They're like, they're like uh, tennis balls. Yes. Covered in chocolate. But they taste better than that. Yes. So, so visit berries.com. B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot -E com. Yes. So you go on, you're going to click on the microphone in the top right corner and type... Tuesday. That's Tuesday, singular. Yes. Berries.com. Click on the microphone and enter our code Tuesday. Yes. And uh, we're, we're, we're not just saying this. It's a, it's a great, great uh, gift for Mother's Day or for, you know, Girlfriend's Day. Yeah, or wife or gay lover. Whatever yeah. you got. Think outside the box. You got to think outside the box. It, it is Which a box. the gays do. Yes. Think outside the box. Get them a, a berry thing. Nobody's expecting that. It's no. berries dripped in white. Milk or dark chocolatey Ooh, goodness. Wee, you're getting me moist. Topped with chocolate chips, nuts, and decorative swizzle. Choose from berries, cake truffles, brownie pops, pretzels, and more. Holy All you moly. need is the code TUESDAY when you order. Giant, fresh, juicy, delicious. 
Yes, and uh, here's the only way to get the amazing deal for these freshly dipped strawberries starting at nineteen ninety nine. over a 40% savings. <laughs> this offer is for my listeners only when you use my code TUESDAY. Yeah, so do it. Go to berries.com. B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. There it is. Now, uh, Mark, I have a little beef with you, buddy. Oh, God. Want to get it out there. Bad? Well, it's bad. Oh, shit. Pretty serious beef. Uh-oh. They send us this copy, and it says my code. I switch it on the fly to our code. You don't switch. You say my code. Oh, oh, oh. What's oh. this my code? I switch to our. I'm uh, I'm reading. Well. I'm sorry. I switched on the fly because I'm considered, and I love you, and I think, you're a, you know, I think you're a good big part of the show here. Well, I mean. You don't think I'm a big part of the show. No, I mean, no offense, but if you would have said my code, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought twice. Well, well that's because you're not thinking about other people or ah. yourself. I'm not thinking about me either, if that helps. Yeah, that, that helps. But I think we're going right. to do that one later. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean sorry. Our code, everybody. Yeah, your code. It's Mark's code, everybody. Oh, boy. Go uh, in and type in Mark's code. Yes, Tuesday. Yep. It's my code. My code is uh, need a better friend. Oh, come on. Who is there supporting you with that egg throwing? I'm you right were, behind you. You were supportive. Yeah, and I love eggs. All right, you're back on board. Yeah! Our right. code. Our code. Our. Now, where were you? I was in Canada. Where the hell were you? Uh, Vegas, baby. Oh, I was all over. I was in L.A. Oh, a lot oh, of man. L.A. What's that? A lot of L.A. I'm going back and forth. They're trying to get me to move there. They're, they're trying to pull me in, and I'm fighting them. Yeah, get out of there. You don't yeah, want to live there. it's like there. a tractor beam, and I'm just waving it away. Get out of here. Ah. That'll be the end of the podcast. No, never. All right. So, uh... Our podcast. Yes. Not mine. Tuesday. So, uh... I'm in L.A. This True TV flies me out there. I'm shooting some stuff for them. And, uh... They had that kind of money. Oh, they got money, baby. Wow. Well, this is the the clinker. Mm -hmm. So they bring me out. They put me in this hotel, which is nice. I've never had a hotel in L.A. It's my first time. You know, I've always been the... What are you talking about? I've seen you in hotels in L.A. Well, that's true. But, you know, it's been been a while, and usually I do the, uh, the, the bed jumping. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, that bed jump gets you in trouble. Oh yeah, but uh, boy, it makes life worth living. Yep. So uh, I, I got a hotel in L.A. It's weird. I have somewhere to go. I usually sit in a Starbucks like a fucking lunatic for eight hours. So uh, I'm in this hotel. It's an extended stay America. Oh, those are fun. Worst hotel I've ever been in my life. I hate those things. They're the worst. And I'm gonna I'm gonna bash them. Sherry's berries. You're great. Extended stay. Trash heap. <laughs> heap of trash. <laughs> Let me tell you, let me give you the rundown of this hotel. Please. Uh-uh-uh. First of all, it's an extended stay, so they assume you're going to be there for like a month. So extended? They, they don't do housekeeping. And I'm not a big housekeeper. I'm not a guy who's like, hey, you better put a mint on my dick every minute. You know, I'm not one of these guys. <laughs> I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> Please. I'll, I'll bend down and flick it off like a catapult. Like a Dan Cook bit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, so, uh... So, okay, so I'm there four or five nights. So by the third night, you got pizza boxes everywhere. I got spent condoms over here. I got a maxi pad on the wall. It's wild. It's disgusting in there. I got a bug zapper going. It's, it's horrific. So there's no housekeeping. So that's already a, a bummer. I got jizz everywhere. It's brutal. A bug zapper. Yeah. You should come on that bug zapper. Oh man, that would be a, a scent. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, second, that's number one. Two, it's pet friendly. So I don't mind you bringing a fucking hamster around every now and then, but I got I got dogs and cats up and down the hallway. <laughs> I got fucking pigeons flying around and cockatiels. I got cockatiels? Arm- arma- cockata- cockatoo, cockamy, cockayu. I got fucking armadillos around. I got ferrets r- jumping up and down. It was it was a zoo. Something like a vet's office. It was a vet. <laughs> Vet's office has more organization. At least some of the people, the animals are dead at a vet. What neighborhood is this in? It was in Burbank. Ah, ha. Yeah, real burbs, real burbs. Burbs Bank is what you call it. But yes, all right, so pets everywhere. Mm Mm-hmm. No housekeeping. Uh Uh-huh. There's no coffee in the room. You ever go to a... You're not, you're a high maintenance fella. I've never drank coffee in my life, but I'm just now I'm just adding things on the list. I mean, coffee in the room that's that's a bonus. That's every hotel. That's a standard in America. That's pretty standard, I guess. But coffee. you don't even drink coffee. I know, but I'm just now I'm just angry. Was so there I'm a hair dryer? No, no hair dryer. No hair. And, and well, now no, we're in trouble. No, uh, you know how they do the shampoo, conditioner, lotion. Of course, only shampoo. By the way, you could you could go ahead at these hotels if you're listening. Hotels, you can go lotion, lotion, lotion in my room. 
You want shampoo. No. I shampoo once a decade. Is that right? Yeah, that's why I look so shiny and you productive. You a good uh, glow. Yeah, you're not supposed to shampoo every day. Ugh. But you're supposed to lotion your cock up every day. I do that. Or your vagina lips, ladies. We're, we're here for you. Yeah, that's why my cock looks so young, and it's little. Mine looks terrible. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, it's all bruised, yeah. bumped, it's shaking, it's weird. Anyway, so you got the cock right. too. You don't like the hotel. All right, and then the other thing, just to round it all about. Off, I think. Round it off, thank mm-hmm. you. I go, uh, hey, Johnny at the front desk. I'm a huge fan of the wake-up call. I love a wake-up call. But you have an iPhone. I like a wake-up call. Okay. I don't trust the phone. I don't want to talk to anybody. I need it. All right, so tell me more. So I go, hey, buddy, can I get a wake-up call? 8 a.m. tomorrow. I got a big shoot television. Big time. I made it. They're paying for this room. And the guy goes, we don't do wake-up calls. I like, what, mm-hmm. are you, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, we don't do that here. Like, What's well, a hotel. They don't do it. So I hate the place. Wow. Well, no wake-up call. I think wake-up calls and coffee, it's, those are bonuses. I never, I've never had a, a, I feel like I could stay here. I don't mean to poo-poo. You're poo-pooing. I'm not poo-pooing. You know, I think you, you got some complaints and grievances, but I got to tell I think I, I personally I could stay there. I don't drink coffee. I don't like a maid in my room. And who uses a wake-up call? What is this, the 60s? I love a wake-up call. I'll tell you what poo-pooed was that cockatiel on my uh, front doorstep. <laughs> uh, it was brutal. I mean, this, it was white trash walking around in sweatpants, holding a collie and shit. It was brutal. White trash in Burbank? This yeah. doesn't add up. Well, I mean, they're in a hotel. They don't live there. Aha, uh-huh, I uh-huh. see. Aha. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so then I go to the producer, and, you know, we're having beers at the end of the shoot. We're just like a rap party thing. That sounds fun. Yeah, it was great. And I was like, uh, whew, I got to tell you, Jimmy, that hotel, real uh, real load of garbage there. And he was like, what hotel? I was like, the extended stay. He's like, you're still there? So, yeah, he's like, everybody complained. We moved them. Oh! I was like, I didn't know we could do that. Wow. I wrote it out like a champ. Wow. Yeah. So you're the lowest maintenance. Uh, exactly. These other people are high maintenance. Boy, twist ending. Yes, but I'm telling you, if you could see this hotel. I'd have to see it, I think. Because I mean, everybody left. What do we got, a dirty carpet? What's the oh, carpet situation? Oh, real dirty carpet. It's one of those that you turn the lights on and the bulbs are dead. Oh. Uh, it just had a bad vibe. I don't know. Dead bulbs. You ever stay in a hotel that has no carpet? Just a cement floor? I have seen that, Those yeah. are pretty bad. I'd stay in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, boy, it was a PU sandwich. Yeah, that's uh, that's tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, but then the shows went well, and I uh, did some did some great shows. You know, following L.A.'s got some celebs. You know, we got your Louis, you your your Rock, <laughs> but I mean they've got like your Judd Apatow's going up, then Whitney Cummings, then Dane Cook, and then Chris D'Elia, and then the other guy and the other guy. So you're like, gee, this is like an action packed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, did all those shows. The Improv, I love the Improv. I want to give a shout out to them. What a great club! You gotta get me on some of these hot L.A. shows because I, I go to L.A. I don't do the hot show. I did Cameron Esposito's show. That's a good show. That was pretty hot. Yeah. And then I did uh, Dave Waite's show. That was hot. The Barbershop one. Oh, that's a great show. But I want to get in some of these other hotnesses. You got to do fresh shots. I, I want to give a shout out to Adam Conover. Thanks for having me. He has a mm-hmm. show at the new UCB Sunset. Oh, that place looks like a big mall. Woo! But those UCB people, I got some real issues with them. They got they got some cash. They got some cash, and they're really rooking people. Yeah. I mean, they, they got people in, in these sketch groups. They have to pay rent. And they have to pay their director, yes. and then they sell out a show, and they're paid tickets, and they get yes. zero dollars of it. That UCB folks, I, I gotta tell you, I don't think you should buy a ticket to that place. Wow. Whiplash is great; it's free. Yeah, go to Whiplash Monday nights at eleven. But these shows where they're charging money, know that the artists are not getting any of that money. No, we get two free beers. And uh, I just think that place is a fucking, it's a criminal operation, if you ask me. It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know that much about it. But uh, I heard Amy Poehler say something, and it was and I, at the time I was like, that's a good point, and I can't remember what it was. Well, they just opened a new fucking Mall of America in L.A., so they're, they're printing money. It's huge. And uh, they, gotta, they make these people take all these classes that yeah. cost money, and then they pay rent to perform their show, and then all the ticket prices go right to the theater. It seems a little topsy-turvy, if hey, you ask me. I'm with you. Something's fishy, that's for sure. Yeah, but uh, also I want to plug uh, the Walsh Brothers just started up the Great and Secret Comedy Show. It's going to be a monthly at the Comedy Store. In L.A., I don't oh, know exactly great. what days of the week it is, but you'll you'll be able to get on there when you're out there. I'd love to. I love the store. Great, yeah, great room. The store it used to be Ciro's, and it's haunted, and it yeah. used to be an old mob hang. And uh, well, I know we got to wrap, but I got to run this by you. This is similar to your egg story, please. And I just want to know where you stand. Okay, I'll, I'll stand with you, buddy. I mean, I I, I was a witness, so I just want to hear your take. Okay, 
But I was uh, I was on a bus at one point in L.A., and there were these, uh, you know, it was late at night. I don't know. It was probably 11 at night. We're all on the bus. And it's like a Monday night or a Tuesday night. I can't remember what it was. But this group of, like, young Latinas, like teenagers, mm-hmm. were, like, you know, having a good time in the back and, like, fucking chatting and yelling and hooting and hollering. And uh, this guy... Like a weird looking white guy, like almost looked like a, like a military guy or something. He yells out, "Hey, inside voices!" And uh, everybody on the bus was like, "Whoa, what the fuck was that?" And uh, he looked kind of like Woody Harrelson, like he had a he had a look. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the women were like, the girls were like, "What? What'd you say to me?" He's like, "Inside voices, have some consideration." And they were like, "Fuck you, mother!" And like they went off on this guy, and he was like, "I'm just trying to think here." Yeah. I think it was a little off or something. Yeah. But they were like, fuck you. We can do whatever we want. It's a free country. He's like, yeah, but you're on a, pro- a public bus. And I mean, the guy was kind of right. Of course. But uh, eventually they stopped and they like quieted down. But they were like, fuck this motherfucker. Like, you know, you could hear it all, but he didn't care. Yeah. And then eventually they were like, they started getting loud again. And he goes, hey, inside. And this woman just fucking snapped. She just got in his face. Fuck you, man. And like, the girls are holding her back and like holding her purse and pulling her and shit. And she was like, fuck you. Like getting in his face, pointing at him. And the guy didn't budge at all. And it was a, it was, I got off at the next stop. It was quite a scene. Those people are always my heroes, the people that don't budge and they speak up. I don't know yeah. how they do it. I don't know how he did it either. I think he was a military guy. But I, I, I've had a, three incidences in the last couple of weeks with the same thing where people, there's a woman, uh, sitting in front of us in the bus. It was my buddy Jason and Bart. And this woman was talking on speakerphone. Mm. She had three conversations on a packed bus on speakerphone. So I can hear both sides of the conversation. And she's uh-huh. yelling and she's like, I don't know about that. I got and, she, and then my buddy Bart just started shoving her seat. And she was like a sweet lady. Oh, okay. She turned around after and she's like, what? what? What are you doing? Is something all right? And he's like, yeah, could you quiet down? He's like, yeah, you're on speakerphone. You're yelling. He's right. like, people are trying to sleep. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. She's oh, like, that's... I get excited. It's my grandmother's birthday. I'm like, my granddaughter's birthday. We're that's crazy. great. She's like, we were on. It's great. But she was like, we were on standby. We didn't think we were going to get on. And now I'm just calling. I've never been to New York before. And I get crazy. Yeah. So she ended up being like sweet. But it was like. How are you this unaware? I know. It's such I know. a wild unawareness of like every literally everyone on the bus is turning around. Like at, I'm, I'm sitting behind her, so I can see every person. Yeah. At some point, turn and be like, "What the fuck is wrong with? Why would you think to talk that loud with your phone on speaker? That's wild. Why? Are you, how do you not consider other human beings around you? I can't wrap my head around it. It's, it blows my mind. And like afterwards, she, like I said, she was like, "I'm so sorry." She's like, "I'm all just excited, and this is crazy." Well, that's rare. It never goes that way. Very rarely. But it's just like, okay, well, just, all right. So I guess you didn't know, right? But for future reverence, other people don't want to hear your conversation. Of course. And and I hate to say it, but there's a racial component. Hmm. You know, if if it's a uh, different race than you and you're a white guy it's it's like should i bring it up because everybody on the bus was like agreeing with this weirdo military guy right but no one wanted to say it because then it's like well i'm siding with him and now it's whitey versus you and it's, it's nerve-wracking it's because nerve-wracking. it becomes a racial issue that's yeah. why that's why it's so much nicer when a when a white fucking frat douche is loud yes. and you're like hey knock it off you fucking idiot exactly and he's like well fuck it you still might be in a fight right but at least it's not you look like a racist right but it's just tough now because sometimes you go that guy's an asshole, and you go, what, do you don't like Jews? And you're like, no, I don't like that guy. Stop. You're the one making it general. Well, this is like, we were talking about, uh, we got to wrap up quick, but Dave Smith was talking about this. Our friend Dave was like, he's like, I actually like overt racism because it's refreshing now. When people are like, fuck black people, or whatever it is they uh, say. At least it's honest. Yeah, because, but now, that's how it used to be. Back in like the 60s, people would be like, I don't like white people, I don't like black people, I don't like gay people. So you knew where everyone right. stood. But now everything can be misconstrued. I'm like, right. this woman was yelling. Well, you don't like black people? What? Right. No, I don't like this woman who's yeah, yelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but then we're, we're scared of losing our jobs. Yeah, now it's, it's everything's, is that racist? Was that racist? Is that racist? Oh, everything is taken, you know. You just mentioned the, a race and people are like, oh, you're an animal. But that's what's tough about. You're a bigot. That's one of the things that's hard about being a black person or, sure. or a gay person or a Latino because anything that goes right, you have to wonder, is this happening because I'm racist? Because right. of racism. Right, right. Especially you never with cops. Because cops, most, a lot of cops are dicks. Indeed. And so you're like, is this cop just being a dick to me, or is he being a dick to me because I'm black? And so I think as a black guy, you're just going to assume black. Right. Patrice so. has that great bit about the guy with the dogs. What's that? That one's on the last album. Mr. P, I think it is. Great album. When the guy's asking about his dogs. He's like, I have to question if everything is racist. 
He keeps asking me about my dogs. And I was like, oh, this guy likes dogs, and he knows that I like dogs. And he's like, wait a minute, this guy's trying to test to see if I fucking beat my dogs. Ah. So it's tough. It's tough being black. It's tough being a woman. It's tough being a man. But no one wants to hear that. Life's tough. It's tough, but it's all very silly, and uh, just remember it's all silly, and it'll all be over soon. And, yeah, uh, and d- download a podcast and listen to it, because I think it makes the day a little better, especially this one. Yeah. Fuck the other podcast. Listen to ours, though. Yeah. And uh, take care of Oh! Before we forget, June 2nd. Yes! Sam Marill, one of the best comics in the city, one of our closest friends. He's recording his new album at the Village Underground. Yes. In, uh, in, in, in fuck, what, Times Square, Union Square? West Village. The West Village in Greenwich Village, June 2nd. Get your tickets. Village Underground, Sam Marill CD taping. If you're in New York or Jersey, the tri-state area, come down to this. Yes. Sam is a fucking killer. One of the funniest guys around. And there's nothing better than being part of an album or a special. Yes. We've talked about it before because you're part of a piece of history. It's in the can. It's art history, so you can be in the crowd June 2nd. And Sam is one of the really great guys. Great writer, great comic. He's on the way up, and you want to see him now. And just a great friend. One of the great friends I've had in my life. So uh, June 2nd. Come to the Village Underground, and uh, take care of each other, everybody. Be kind. Please and, rewind. And i got to apologize about the Middle East episode. I'm sorry. We had to take it down, but I love you all. Yes. And hey, that's the that's the breaks when you got a podcast like this. Yes. We love you, and uh, this weekend I'll be at Go Bananas, May 7th through the 10th. Come out. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. I yes. love you, buddy. Love you, and uh, this is our pod. Yes. So this is uh, Mark and Joe signing off. <laughs> Bye-bye. My radio is spitting at me. Censorship will take us to hell